When you start studying ancient human history and the origins of humankind, and we in South Africa see ourselves as the experts in the origins of humankind because we tell the whole world that we live in the cradle of humankind. And when you, for those of you that have never been to South Africa, that's all you see everywhere you go, cradle of humankind, cradle of humankind. And, but what they do is they do, they cause a lot of confusion with these signs because they take you off to the wrong places. They take you off to Stagfontein Caves and to this wonderful sort of Disney world of cradle of humankind called Marupeng. It's beautifully put together, but they do cause a lot of confusion because they start showing you what, what is still regarded as the theory of evolution, and they sell it to you as fact. And I have a bit of a problem with that. But anyway, that's a, another presentation for another day. So when you start studying the origins of humankind and ancient human history and, and ancient civilizations, um, I'm sure many of you will be aware of this. It doesn't take long before you realize that something doesn't quite fit and some large pieces of the puzzle are missing. And, uh, and you've got to go outside of the establishment and the textbooks. You've got to go out to crazy places like this where you find the authors and the researchers that are writing and working outside of the established academic um, areas where you, to find really some very interesting scientific research and information. And uh, it's really on that basis that many scholars and authors have been writing for decades, actually hundreds of years, and in fact, when you go a, a lot further back in time, for thousands of years, scholars and writers have been writing about this first and ancient civilization of humans that lived at the bottom tip of Africa, the southern tip of Africa. But all of this has been written about from extracts of ancient texts and scripts and Sumerian tablets and this and that and folklore. And, but very little physical evidence has ever been presented. And it's really this, our, our discoveries in South Africa of the last um, seven years and especially the last three years when I got involved with Jan Heine, um, when we started making these discoveries that pretty much blew our minds and forced us on a daily and weekly basis to reconsider everything we thought we knew about our human history. Um, the last email, for example, I got from Professor Paul Von Ward from Harvard University who sent me his amazing book, God's Genes and Consciousness, who writes extensively about this first civilization of advanced beings who lived at the southern tip of Africa. And so it goes, just to mention one. But what we do know is that the Sumerian tablets keep telling us some of these very important things. And it's up to us to decide if we're going to believe it or not. Now, I have no doubt whatsoever that the ancient civilizations had a lot better things to do than to sit and try and write down a bunch of bull to try and confuse future generations about what it is that they knew. Okay, And, and this is where I have a real problem with the sort of the... the uh, divided approach that some academics have. They'll tell us that we've learned everything we know today from the Sumerians, you know, archaeology, I mean, um, uh, agriculture, astronomy, um, architecture, medicine, law, etc. We pretty much got from the Sumerians, but when it comes to some of the more weird and esoteric stuff, say, oh no, they must have been drunk when they wrote that. But, well, you know, you must decide. Do you believe this stuff or don't you? And I, I don't think we can have this divided approach to the ancient texts. Um, and these tablets tell us very clearly what was going on in ancient times, where the first people lived, what they did, why they did it, you know, who created them, where did they come from, and all these things. And it suddenly paints a completely different picture from what we find in our textbooks. And I must tell you, one of the most common emails I get from people from all over the world, and I'm talking hardcore academics, is I love your work, I love your research, it's really wonderful, exciting stuff, but I can't support you on an official basis because I may, might lose my job. Now, that's not the kind of academic fraternity we'd like to see evolving around us. And I hope that as this information comes out, people start looking at this, especially from the academic world, with more serious, a more serious approach because it definitely deserves that. Just to show you some... Two beautiful example of, uh, examples of Sumerian tablets. The one on the left is a Sumerian tablet, one of the king's list that's been found. And this one talks about um, a time period of 212,000 years. Uh, it names the kings that ruled um, for eight 
eight kings had ruled before the flood over a period of 212,000 years. Now, these are periods that our archaeologists and historians just do not want to deal with. Okay? The more popular um, Sumerian king list is the one on the right. That goes even further. That names over 130 kings, uh, 10 of whom ruled before the flood over a period of 224,000 years. And we start seeing that these ancients had information that somehow was hidden or lost or consciously removed from our body of knowledge and information. And then we start finding the ancient ruins of Southern Africa. Well, the current belief is that Southern Africa was a sparsely populated place with very few inhabitants before a thousand years ago. And the emphasis is on very few inhabitants. We're talking a few thousand. That's it. A bunch of hunter-gatherers that ran around, did nothing better to do than shoot some buck and, you know, make some biltong and, and you know, have a party. I don't know. Just somehow survive and make pictures on cave walls and things. And that's what we're told. Pick up the history books. That's what they'll tell you. Well, fortunately for us, the stone ruins of South Africa and Southern Africa tell us a completely different story. These um, stone structures that we've been discovering are often called cattle kraal, of little historic value. Once again, this is the most common reference you'll find in the history books and the academic books on these. And some of the references are so preposterous that you actually wonder how these people got their degrees. Um, I'm going to take you through some of them, and then the rest of it uh, you can get in my new book, Temples of the African Gods, which tells you a, a lot more detail about what's really going on here. The one thing we need to embrace as well is that ancient civilizations had a body of knowledge and information that we've long lost. And we've got to stop assuming that we are the pinnacle of civilization because we've got cell phones. Okay, that does not constitute civilization. And there are ways and means of getting information across and sharing information using other types of technology that we don't quite understand. Well, the first thing you'll note about the stone ruins of Southern Africa is they're all circular. They're all circular. They all have internal structures, sometimes very complex, sometimes very simple. And sometimes they have these little weird attachments on the outside of the stone structures. But the most important thing to take note of is that they're all unique. Each and every one of them is completely unique. And in, my, in the longer presentations, I go into great detail why that is so. Some of the walls are still three meters high and two meters wide. Some of them are really complex. And you can see great destruction um, that happened at some distant time in history that caused the sudden disappearance of this vast civilization. Very importantly to note that some of them also, or many of them, show the sort of spiderweb effect that goes out from the central stone structure. And that's very important to note. It's not just the stone walls of the central structure that are so impressive. It's the stuff around it that's eroded and gone, that's disappeared, that's lying beneath meters of soil. There's a very good example of a very simple structure with a simple central um, circle. And then you start seeing the more complex ones. These weird little internal structures that are 1.2, 1 1.5 meters in diameter. Absolutely no idea what they were used for. This is a very important stone, stone circle. It's one of the first ones that was measured and, and sort of um, uh, understood by Johann Heiner, who's uh, the main sort of instigator and the guy that kept um, insisting that these structures are not just cattle crawl, that they have a much larger importance in human history. Johann has actually originally started photographing many of these from the air about 20 years ago and was responsible for bringing this to the attention of the South African Archaeological Institution and so forth. And, and, uh, but he has just been completely ignored. And then you start seeing some really interesting, um, interesting shapes, like on the left-hand side there, you can see that weird horseshoe shape with a perfect circle in the middle, and the little towers at the entrance to the horseshoe shape. And these suddenly start to reemerge.